Hi, this is Passy's World of ICT, and welcome to our Scratch Magic 8 Ball project. Here it is. We click in here and we can type an answer. So let's ask the Magic 8 Ball, are you honest? Because maybe he doesn't give honest answers. So put your question in, click the blue tick here. His reply is no. Well, that's interesting. Let's ask him another question. Click on the ball again. Was that true? And click the tick. Well, see, it gives the question here. Was that true? Yes, it is decidedly so. Well, so the Magic 8 Ball isn't honest. Well, he does random numbers, so we don't know how that happens. Anyway, let's start having a look at the project. All right. For all of those answers, we need these sprites costumes shown here. They're a bit hard to read at this resolution, but we have 18 of them all together right down to the bottom here, the last one, which says probably yes, costume 45. Now, when you look at the numbering of these guys, they start at 28 and go down to 45. And you might be wondering, well, that's kind of strange. Why do we start at 28 and not at one? Well, originally we did start at one, but we had a lot of trial and error to get these guys right. And when you've used a sprite number, it's not reusable. You can't go back and re-number um, your sprite or anything. You can move these costumes around, though. You can grab this one here and you can slide it up to there. Okay, so you can move them, but you can't actually... Um, now, where's 31 gone? 31 has disappeared. Now, this is a weird thing. Sometimes it'll move it right down the bottom on you, which is a bit of a pain, and you have to kind of um, find it and move it back up the chain. All right, we're not going to worry about doing that. It'll take a while, but we could get it back in the right spot. But you cannot go in and rename these guys. Like, if we try to rename that guy to costume one, it doesn't happen. It's made it costume 46 all right anyway let's go to the scripts which are on the answer but no maybe before we do that let's show you how we build this little blue triangle for the answer in adobe fireworks okay now this took a bit of playing around but we figured out in the end that what we needed was a uh, size which was 108 by 86 and that fitted in our whole project really well so we've set transparent here for the background and creating this new document and we say okay we need to get on to vector tools over here click on that get onto the polygon tool we need three sides down the bottom here and then we need to pick a color now with our colors we actually used a radial gradient so uh, let's just change this solid here into gradient type we're picking is radial then you can go over to the paint bucket here and set your colors all right now for this first color we used a um, kind of darker blue which was uh, 0, 0, 0, 6, 6. that's the one there and for this one up the other end we picked a lighter blue and that one is 0, 0, 0033c c that one right there so click that in Okay, that's going to give us the fill for it, so we can just click off that. For the pencil, uh, we used a lighter blue color, which was 0066CC, this one right here. And we set that width of the pencil to 2. Alright, then it's a matter of drawing your triangle, and so... This, when you draw it, comes out like this, so you have to get on your pointer tool and move that guy, and then you need to get on this scale tool here underneath the pointer, and you need to rotate that guy round, um, so he's kind of like that, and from there it takes a bit of fiddling around, okay, so you've got to get him straight, which we're not quite able to do here, um, got to stretch the guy a bit. Okay, look, I could spend a little while doing this, but I think if we go back to the pointer tool, that's basically the triangle, all right? It probably needs a little bit of stretching down the, the front there. But um, that's basically your answer triangle, and so you can save that. 
If it's a bit too dark, you can go to filters, uh, filters up the top here, adjust color, brightness, contrast, uh, but I don't think we actually use that. Let's use it anyway. Um, you could make that guy brighter if you wanted to and lower the contrast and you can see that radial getting darker in the middle and things like that. So you can mess around until you get something you like. Now, if you uh, don't want to make your own one, that's fine. There's one on our website and check the YouTube uh, details and there'll be a link to our website where you can get this image ready made for you. All right, let's go over how you make the ball. Again, it's create new, and this time we used a 420 by 420 for the eight ball. So we just set up width 420, height 420, and click OK. Now with that guy, you go onto these vector tools and get off the polygon tool now onto the ellipse tool. All right, again, we were using a radial gradient. So we click where it's got um, here and go to gradient and then pick radial. Uh, go to the paint bucket and pick our colors. Now for our first color, we actually used a gray, which was this one, the hash all nines one. So we get that color and up this other end, we just use black, all zeros color. All right, so that's set up, just click off it anywhere. We didn't have a pencil outline on this, and what we did was uh, held down shift to get it nice and round, and you can sort of draw your guy in there and then get on the black arrow tool and move it around. Now, it needs to be a little bit bigger. So if we go on the scale tool here, the second one under the black arrow, we can kind of um, stretch that out a bit and up a bit maybe really want to fill that whole area up. Um, all right, so something like that's probably okay. Now let's get back onto the pointer tool, the black arrow tool. Now this gradient, what we did here was we shifted that up here to make the light shining down and on that, and we stretched the end of it probably something like that, I think. Again, you have to play around with this till you uh, get something which looks good, but that's basically what we did. We then went on to the uh, ellipse tool again, changed it back just to normal none here, uh, and changed the color to white, and then we drew ourselves another circle on the inside, and the size of that was 158 by 158. I'll just control Z back because I forgot to hold, hold down shift then to get a perfect circle. Now. Down the bottom left hand corner here, that's pretty much right. I think in ours it was actually 158 and height was 158. So we'll just adjust them and get them uh, spot on. <coughs> and then onto the black arrow tool and you can kind of move that into the middle and keep that there. All right, so that's our white part of uh, the Magic 8 Ball. Now, circle's not 100% smooth there. Let's get on the pencil, actually, and use white for that and use a size of 5 on the pencil down here. And uh, I think that's what we ended up with. Now, the text. Onto the text tool is letter A. And what we did there was we set the... Uh, just kept it at Arial, black for the color, set that to about 90, and typed in an 8, and then with the black arrow tool, move that into position. Okay, so that's basically the eight ball uh, finished and made. And we need to move along here because we need to get into the scripts. All right then, let's look at the stage first. Okay, the background on the stage is this uh, 480 by 360 picture. We downloaded it off the internet and the address is shown here in the comments and it's also on our website. Now, the stage isn't doing much, it's just hiding its... Um, hiding what the last answer was, typing in the question here, this does an input box, this light blue one, this ask one, uh, broadcasts the message shake, and that gets things started off, and then whenever it receives um, another go sort of ask question uh, broadcast message down here, it'll do the same thing. Now we're assuming in this tutorial that you're quite familiar with Scratch because you've done our earlier tutorial, so we're gonna go through this code fairly quickly. On the ball, uh, that sprite, at the beginning we want to hide a whole bunch of things. Uh, when it receives this shake message, it's time for the ball to move side to side. So I've got this play sound shake. Now that sound shake we got from another guy's project um, in Scratch. And 
you can go to our website and actually get a copy of that if you need it. So we position the magic eight ball for you repeat five times this um, gliding, which makes it move side to side while that shake sound is playing. So we set up the side to side movement to match the shake basically. So five was a good repeat number for that. And then it sets a fortune number. It picks a random number from one to 18 because in those costumes for the answers, even though they're not numbered too well, there are 18 of them. Okay, and then it broadcasts as time to show that answer. So we also have the magic eight ball say, um, the here, tell us back what our question was in case we've forgotten what it was and hold on to that for four seconds. And then after that, it can broadcast another go. Another go is picked up by the next question sprite, which we'll look at now. And at the beginning, it's hidden, but then when it receives another go message, it just appears on the bottom of the screen and puts this message that's showing right now, actually click the magic eight ball to ask another question. All right, uh, the answer. In here, we've got a very long script that is very repetitive that when it receives show, it needs to go up to the front, this little triangle that shows the answer. And depending on what fortune number the magic eight ball chose, uh, we'll change into one of our costumes here. So remember back in costumes, our first one was uh, actually costume 28 before we renamed it here, but we've got all the costume numbers and each costume number has a different one on it. And then according to that, you go to a certain place. If you go to our website, there's comments, you can get this code and see all of the details for it. Just down the bottom of here, we get to the last possible fortune, fortune equals 18. And then we just have a little pixelate effect that repeats, um, which kind of makes the answer pixelate in and appear, a bit like the way it floats up to the surface on a real magic eight ball. Finally, there's a little bit of code here on the right-hand side. What that does is they might not click the ball to have another go. They might actually click where that answer triangle is. So if they do click on that, we just do the whole kind of um, another go, ask the question sort of thing on there. All right, the last thing I want to show you is how you set up a costume, how you set up one of these answer costumes, all right? So say we were going to um, have another answer in there. So we just go to paint into the sprite e editor here. And the first thing we do is click this import button. And if we navigate our way down to where all our stuff is for this project, uh, just bear with us while we do that, into scratch eight ball, down here, are all the different triangles we tried. That's the one we actually ended up going with this one here. So we click on that and we say, okay. All right, that brings our triangle in. Now we need some text writing. And so for this, we need to set a color. And so we'll just set the color to white for the text. And the size we found that worked well was between 14 and 18. We'll try 18 first. The font, uh, we were using was Arial Rounded MT Bold, but as long as you use some kind of bold font like Helvetica Bold or Verdana Bold, that's pretty good. So this answer is going to be Dream On, and we just press Shift and Enter to get to the next line, and then type out On. This little black square we can grab to move it around, and we can probably go with that size font. Let's just get the cursor here, click in front of that On, and actually we might just click past that and change that to a lowercase. Let's click back in front of it again and we need some spaces there just to center it, okay? And then we can move it sort of around a bit. That looks pretty good, so we'll just say okay. Uh, if you look over on the right hand side, that's showing us um, what that answer would look like. All right, and then if we wanted to bring that into the code, we need to go to our scripts here and <clears throat> on the scripts, we could uh, just get this little bit here. We'll just unhook this for a minute and duplicate that so we could have another fortune in there and we could then snap this one back in and we could say, okay, if the fortune is 19, which is uh, a new one we've got, so we'll just type 19 in there, not 119, but 19. All right, and then we'd have to go back to the ball too and change here now that it picks a random number between um, one and 19. So there's now 19 messages. If we go back to the answer script, 
Uh, yep, that flows down to 19 at the bottom there, and we've got that new costume in there. Uh, now that costume, that new one, Dream On, was costume 47 at the bottom here, so in the scripts, let's just go and check that and make sure it's changing to costume 47. So if it's number 19, we want to change to costume 47 down the bottom here. So that's Magic 8 Ball done. Go to our website, the link is in the details of this YouTube video, and then you can get uh, a whole lot more information, you can get all of the resources you need to build this. There will be screen captures of all of the uh, script blocks, and make this guy because it's a lot of fun, and once you've got it, it will be able to answer so many of your questions.